Section 2.7, we are looking at the derivatives of sine, cosine, natural log, and e today. So we're going to pick up four rules um, that you'll want to memorize uh, as we go through it. They are not difficult ones to memorize. So here we roll. Um, let me get a pen going here. We, yeah, we talked about that. So let's move forward. Derivatives of sine and cosine. The derivative of sine is cosine of x. And the derivative of cosine is negative sine of x. Now those represent the general derivatives. And I could tell you then what the slope is of sine of anything, like sine of pi over 2. The sine of pi over 2's derivative would be the cosine evaluated at pi over 2, which looks like it's b0, which makes sense. Because if I think about sine doing this, um, it reaches its top value at pi over 2, right? And then the derivative, or the tangent line, at pi over 2, why the cosine of pi over 2 would equal 0, and there's the slope. So that makes sense. That does not erase. All right. Um, let me get the eraser out. Let's use big eraser. Oh, sorry, it's taking a while. So let's go through, rather than just memorizing it, I would really like to show you how you can prove the derivative of sine is cosine. So I'm going to write sine of x, and I want to show that I'm going to take its derivative. So I'm going to put brackets around it and apply that prime symbol to it. That'll be equal to, now I'm going to use the definition of a derivative. Do you remember what it is? We worked earlier in the chapter on it, and I'm going to use the one that says it's the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So we'll use that and show that the derivative of sine is cosine. So let's go limit as h goes to 0. My function is sine evaluated at x plus h minus the function evaluated at x, so sine of x, all divided by h. Now, in order to proceed to the next step, I think I want to make use of the trig identity that we learned, the sum of angles. And the sum of angles is sine of a cosine of b plus cosine of a sine of b. Let's use that. So we're going to expand the sum of x plus h, that angle. So it'll be sine of x cosine of h plus cosine of x sine of h minus sine x all divided by h minus 0. And I just noticed I forgot to write the limit as h goes to 0, which is important because that is the whole process. That's the outer function that we want to do. Now, let's rearrange terms a little bit. The limit as h goes to 0 of sine x cosine h minus sine x. Yeah, that's right. I'm just bringing that one a little bit forward in front of this term, cosine x sine h, all over h minus 0. Next, um, well, they have a sine in common, don't they? I got sine and sine. Let's factor a sine x out of there. So I'm going to get the limit. As h goes to 0, factor sine of x forward. That'll leave me cosine h minus 1. All, oops, let's This shouldn't say as h goes to 0. What am I writing there? Just h. Um, and I think I'm going to set this up h, and then we're going to go plus cosine x sine of h over h. Now, that's the same. If I have a times b over c, I could write a times b over c. Those are equivalent, right? Because multiplying, I multiply across the top, and I multiply the denominators and I get back to my original. So that is just fine. We can do that sort of math all day long. 
Um, over on the right, I think I'm even going to think of this being one unit then, and this will be sine over one or just sine of X. And you'll see why in a minute. So the limit as H goes to zero, we get a special trig value out of this one, which is zero. And then I would have sine of, of uh, zero. You know what, I'm not gonna need the limit because let's just go ahead and evaluate since we were evaluating that other one. So that would be sine of zero times zero. No, be sine of x, because this is an x, plus sine h over h, the limit as h goes to 0, this will be going to 1, and then I'll have the cosine of x. All right. Um, Oh, this will work out. I was wondering how I was getting rid of this, but it's multiplied by zero. So we get zero. We knew that the answer should be cosine X, and there it is. Because sine of X times zero would give us zero here, and then we had that going to one, so cosine X times one. Yeah, we were just able to prove that the sine of X derivative is cosine x. You could go and, and show much the same for cosine, kind of in a similar fashion to get negative sine, but we're not going to take the time today to do that. Now, in, in examples a, b, and c, yeah, we just got these three for example one. Let's use our, our shortcuts. The derivative of sine, you got it memorized? We just proved it. y prime equals 2 cosine of x. If you did not write y prime, go back and check it and do it in your notes, okay? Just get in a very good habit of always writing y prime if you're taking the derivative. Oh, the next one. I see this when I saw sine x over two, this is immediately what popped in my brain. I pulled out the one half and then I could, it's times sine x. Then I can just say, okay, then it's a half. What's the derivative of sine? It is cosine. So I get one half cosine x. The next one, the sum of two terms, we just do each one individually. So the derivative of x is one, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine x. If you don't remember it, look back at the top of your notes and you have it. All right, we go into example, oh, we do the derivative of e first. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. It is itself, so that's kind of bizarre, and it's one of the, I think it's the only function that the derivative of e to the x of a function turns out to be itself. You could investigate this derivative on your calculator if you wish, but I'm gonna keep going forward. So now, the derivatives of these are gonna be quite easy. Y prime equals, well, let's focus in on this because this is just a multiplier so we can bring it out forward, and the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, do I need the uh, parentheses? No, so it's 5e to the x. b, y prime equals derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Derivative of x is just 1, so I get 4 times 1, which is 4. And the last one, I move that over at all? Nope. Um, the last one here g prime of x equals, well, this one's easy. Pull the 7 forward. It's just a multiplier. The derivative of e to the x, it's e to the x. And the derivative of cosine is negative sine. That's just kind of a tricky one. You just have to remember that it's negative. Um, and we get 7 e to the x. This will turn out to be a plus sine of x. And that is our g prime of x. They're not bad, are they? All right, next, natural log. The derivative of natural log is 1 over x. Yep. And find the derivative of the following functions. All right, so they're throwing all three kind of new ones in on us. So y prime equals derivative of natural log, x, is going to be 3 times 1 over x. 
2 is our multiplier, the derivative of e to the x. It's e to the x. Minus 1 half, derivative of cosine, is negative sine x. And now let's do a simplifying or, um, yeah, simplifying step where we just clean this up a little bit. You could write this as 3 over x if you wish. Minus 2 e to the x plus sine of x over 2, or if you'd rather say 1 half sine, that's fine too. Differentiating a log with a different base. So with natural log x, its derivative was easy. It's just 1 over x. I wonder if it'll be that easy when it's log, where we have the potential of having different bases. Here we know our base is e. Um, so reading, reading this, it says the log with a different base of b of x is 1 over natural log of the base times 1 over x. We could have written natural log as log base e of x. And if I followed this derivative rule, it would say, well, then it's 1 over, 1 over natural log of the base, but my base is e, and then it's times 1 over x. But we know then that this simplifies to 1 over 1 times 1 over x, which turns out to be 1 over x. So yeah, this rule works even on natural log x, which it should. All right, so this is our rule. I got it circled enough times, huh? While we hate to memorize and reduce calculus concepts to taking derivatives to rote memorization, there is an easy way to conceptualize this derivative. If you remember from algebra or algebra two, there was a way to evaluate logs of a different base. Most of us use the, um, the log of different base function in our calculator to do it because we now are able to modify that, that base where in older calculators you were stuck with either natural log or log base 10. And when we were stuck with those, there was a little change of base formula that we could use, and it was natural log x over natural log b. This over base, the base always went to the bottom. That was an easy way to remember the change of base formula. If I use change of base formula and took the derivative of natural log x over natural log b, I would get, um, let's separate this, the derivative over dx, that just means with respect to x, that x is our independent variable. I would write 1 over natural log b because that is just a coefficient times natural log x. If this is just a number, I could pull it out front and then focus on taking the derivative of just natural log x. And from above, meaning this, we were given that the derivative was 1 over x. So let's use that information. 1 over natural log b is our multiplier, and the derivative of natural log x is 1 over x. And voila, here we have that same formula. Okay, so that's one easy way to prove the general derivative for a log of a different base. In the bottom here, were there no practice problems on that? I guess not. You know what? Let's create one because I think you might like to see one. So let's just give an example of this. Let's go example A and let's have the log of base 5 of x. And I want you to find its derivative. So the log base 5 will be 1 over natural log of b, and 5 is our b. That's our base, isn't it? And then it's times 1 over x, because we're taking the log of base 5 of x. So, you know, you could write this nicely. I could call this 1 over x natural log 5. All right. Um, the last thing on this note page is to recall the two different definitions of derivatives. We have the general derivative, which is all in terms of x. And then I have the two different forms 
of a derivative at a point, a given point like C. And we use the C plus H as H went to zero, and that one was divided by C then. Otherwise, we could say let X go to C, and if X is approaching C, then our denominator is also going to zero. So anytime I see a, a um, structure that looks much like this, I know in my head that they're really asking me to find a derivative. And this is done often on the AP exam. So I want you to get familiar with finding it and recognizing it. More practice on recognizing the definition of a derivative. You evaluate each of the following by recognizing the function whose derivative the limit defines. So I've got the limit as h goes to zero. And if h is going to zero, then that's making the denominator go into zero. And that we know if when slope formula is the change of x. So that change of x is becoming very, very small. It's bringing two points very close together. That defines the slope of a derivative at a point. So what is my function? Under cover, think, what is the actual function here? Um, we are looking at this format. And so there's the point that it's being evaluated at, and then there's the function of C plus H. So this is like my C plus H. My function is sine. If that's what you were thinking, awesome. The C value is pi over three. So what this is really asking for is what is the derivative at pi over three? First, let's take the derivative of sine. So f prime of x, the derivative of sine is cosine. And then the next step, it wanted us to evaluate it at pi over three. And cosine of pi over three would turn out to be one half if you got that unit circle in your head. So f prime of pi over three equals one half. We don't have to go through the long expanse of showing all our work on it if I know that it's really asking for the derivative of sine. Okay, take a look at the next one. Natural log x minus one over x minus e. If x is going to e, then my denominator, that change of x value, is also, not implies, is going to zero, isn't it? And that's a clear indicator that this is a derivative. It's asking us to find the derivative. So be an investigator. What was the original function? The original function is right here. F of x, natural log of x. We want to find the derivative of it. The derivative of natural log is 1 over x. Now, was this evaluated at a point? Yes, it was, right? There's our C. Our C is E. So I want to evaluate this at F prime of E, which makes this one over, one over E. This would have been natural log of E, wouldn't it? And that simplifies to one. So often I can't look at this end and determine what the function was because that's what it's being evaluated at. And it's just going to give us the simplified version of the function evaluated at C, in this case, E. So that turned out to be one. Um, you typically are going to look at the beginning stuff to determine what is the function and what is the point it was evaluated at. All right. Hey, that's all I've got. There is a Delta math assignment on 2.7. So good luck with that.